tonight on Shell Game. Man murdered, thrown from train. Luna and I could dig up any dirt you want on this guy. Why don't you let them get their feet wet? I think I have a story for solutions. And they think the fire was accidental. It's a hot story! Wife turns in husband for heinous crime. Thomas Sterling will be charged with arson. We have just aired a story which could ruin a man's life. My name is Betsy Sterling. His wife? If we've never met before, how I could have possibly tipped you off that my husband is an arsonist? Uh-oh. Give them another chance. Bauer, you're fired. Maybe she was a woman scorned. Or somebody who would really benefit by torching that business. The woman who conned Bauer and Luna. <laughs> Whoever did it doesn't want us to find out the truth. And the truth is, Sterling is innocent. Guilty, Your Honor. I mean, if the guy's innocent and he pleaded guilty, then there's a reason for it. Chambers and who knocked him off? You don't remember? It was about a week ago, the guy who got killed on the train. Chambers. He was a divorce lawyer out of Newport. He was killed on the train coming home from San Jose. by our producer to, as, as usual, usual uh, help him out on a very difficult case. I, I, I think we helped him. John, John, look, all I'm saying is give me and Bauer more to do. Let us pound the pavement. We want to be involved. We want to be where the action is. Bert, you're a writer. Writer's right. Keep the action up here. Yeah, I know, but I, I could help. I mean, I got a real fit. Look at this. Look at this nose. You see this nose? Yeah. I can smell a story a mile away. Whoa, whoa, what's died in here? What? Can't you smell it? Smell what? Could be a story, Bert. John, our guy with the injured back, the one working the insurance fraud, look, he has just filed for an extra $5 million. He claims his newest aspiration is to be a flamenco dancer. A 48-year-old Polish <laughs> flamenco dancer. Hello. Well, John, I cleared the decks for this afternoon. Luna and I could dig up any dirt you want on this guy. That's a good idea. 
Why don't you let them get their feet wet? Yeah, yeah. beets standing around here like a spare tux at a wedding. I need some stimulation. Yeah, an infusion, if you will. Listen, guys, I know you want to do more on the investigative team, but our agenda just does not allow for it right now. I need you here doing what you do best. You'll get your shot, I promise. When? Reed, Reed, you see this? Man murdered, thrown from train? Beautiful, isn't it? I guarantee you, nobody's gonna flip the dial when they see that kind of a teaser. Jump on it. Luna! Uh, yeah. Bert, it's a police matter, Vince, not a solution story. Well, hell, we've solved murders before. Yeah, but not till after the police have finished their investigation. Well, so this time we just beat them to the punch. Even better. Uh, uh, Vince, we've got our hands full right now. We really don't have time to do this. Hey, VV, why don't you use Luna and Bauer? They're not doing anything. There you go, Reed. Utilize your manpower. No, Vince, I don't think that's a very good idea. Hey, VV, you've got them on the payroll. Why not use them? Waste not, want not, you know? Right. Reed, you know, you could learn a thing or two from this girl. I've got a meeting. Sit tight, boys. Jenny, better shut the door. This must be serious. Seems that every time I take a position with Vanneman, you're there to undermine me. I was trying to get Luna and Bauer some work so it'd take the pressure off you. I was just trying to help. You heard me tell them that when the opportunity arose, they'd get their shot. Yet you walked deliberately into Vanneman's office and conned him into making me give them a story. Bill, why can't I have an office like this? I mean, I can do this job. I'm as good as Reed is. Sure you are. Bert, sure. This is Vanneman's office. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know whose office this is, Bill. Smell this. Smell what? I don't smell anything. You know what we need? What's that? An opportunity. Mm -hmm. A big, fat opportunity to come right through that door. Come, Come in. in. Mr. Vanneman. Uh, well, uh, he's, uh, uh... ex on the Anneman Bay. Uh, yes, uh... I think I have a story for solutions. Look, I'm the producer, I make the assignments, you're the associate producer, you back me up. John, aren't you taking this a little bit too seriously? I mean, this is not the World Peace Summit. This is a TV show. My husband's business burned down last night. I think he may have started the fire. That's arson, isn't it? Bert? Huh? I've seen your show. You help people like me, right? Would you just excuse us for just a moment, Mrs. Sterling? Bill, Bill. Our ship just came in, and it's the Starship Enterprise. But, but, but I don't get you, Bert. Why? This is just the kind of story that Bannerman's been looking for. When he sees the kind of show that I can bring in, there's going to be a plaque on my door, and I think you know what it's going to say. <laughs> What? Oh, producer. Producer Bill B. And I think there's an Emmy in it for you. And oh, oh, no, you're talking my language. Oh. Wait a minute, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. We should ask Reed first. What do you think? Hi, guys. Uh, Van and back in? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Well, would you let me know when he gets here? Uh, sure, sure. <laughs> I want to tell you what a great job you're doing of guarding his door. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Uh, maybe he'll give us a raise, huh? I think you should ask for combat, then. <laughs> oh, goodness. We gotta get Sterling out of here? Pronto. Mm. Okay, uh, wait, how do I look? Beautiful. Okay, let's go. <laughs> You must promise me whatever happens, Thomas must never know that I came to see you or told you anything. Oh, well, first and foremost, Bill and I are journalists, and confidentiality is our watchword. It must have been around uh, 2.30 or 3 by the time Thomas got back. I could smell the gasoline on his hands. He tried to wash it off, but it was still there. Then the phone rang. It was the fire department. 
This morning I noticed that one of Thomas's antique beer steins was missing. Hmm. Husband's a beer nut, huh? No, Bill, no, I, I think that what Mrs. Sterling is saying, and very beautifully, is that her husband probably filled the beer stein with gasoline and then used it to set the fire. You're very astute, Mr. Luna. The arson investigators didn't find anything. I mean, they think the fire was accidental. Only we could find that beer stein. There's a shed behind my husband's building near the bridge. I don't think the arson investigators looked in there. Might not be a bad place to start, Bert. My husband's in some kind of trouble. I know he is. Otherwise, he would never do anything like this. You're my only hope. Would you help me save him? I had a nose for this sort of thing. All right, find the phone, call the police, rent the tuxedos. This is it. Following a hot tip by Betsy Sterling, wife of the accused, and armed with evidence found by this reporter in a tool shed behind this burned out building, police and fire officials have brought Thomas Sterling back to the scene of the fire for questioning. You weren't supposed to mention his wife. Come on, buddy, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Something's happening. Uh, Mr. Sterling, do you care to comment? Let's see. Watch your head. What? Oh. Yeah, Gentlemen. All right, Jim, let's get out of here. Uh, it was this Bierstein that proved to be the big clue, the loose end, the Achilles heel, of Sterling's plan. They're going to charge Sterling. I've just received word that Thomas Sterling will be charged with arson. Look at that, Jenny. That's the sound of people out there who loved us. Isn't it great? It's been like this ever since we heard the show last night. Wire services picked us up. We are nationwide. Right. I see a little golden statue with your future oh, 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 Baby. Listen, just, just one thing, Chief. Yeah. I thought you said that you were going to cut out Mrs. Sterling's name because we well, actually well, promised Luna, Luna, it's the okay. best part of the story. But I mean, yeah. wife turns in husband for heinous crime. A little blood in the water, you know? Yes. And this guy, he, he didn't even want us to air it. Read, read. This is, it's his great story. I mean, it's, it's a hot story. Sure, the kind you read in a checkout line at the supermarket. Oh, sorry. Jealousy doesn't become you. I am not jealous. Surprised, maybe, but not jealous. I just want to make sure that their success does not come at the station's expense. What do you mean, John? We have just aired a story which could conceivably ruin a man's life. I just want there to be proof to substantiate your claims. Proof? Yeah. You kept your story notes, didn't you? Our story notes. Story notes. Yeah. No, I, I told them I should write it down. Well, but no, 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 Bill. Bill, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. I said, hey, Bill, what about the darn story notes? Well, no, no, I've said that. Well, maybe it's not that important. I mean, they didn't have the material we usually have to back up a story, but uh, it's their first turn out of the gate. Next time it'll be better. Sure, huh? if there is a next time. Mr. Sterling? Oh, <laughs> hey, you made bail already? Have we ever met before? No, ma'am. Have we? Oh, no, no. I, I, I don't think so. I would have remembered. I mean, I, wouldn't I? I think so, Burr. My name is Betsy Sterling. Mrs. Thomas Sterling. His wife? Maybe you can explain to me, if we've never met before, how I could have possibly tipped you off that my husband is an arsonist. Burr? Uh-oh. Now, wait a minute. Wait. Who was this lady? This was the real Mrs. Sterling. See, the other woman set us up. Mm -hmm. But not mm -hmm. just us. No, no. She really set up Sterling. That's right. How? 
She burned down his business and she made it look like Sterling did it. Why? Now it gets good. Yeah. See, she was Sterling's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And just to whet your appetite, I'm gonna tell you what her name was. Mrs. Brian Chambers. The wife of the man Sterling killed on the train? Hey, you got it. You got it, it pal. Siree. My husband was on a plane flying back from San Jose when his building was burned down. He couldn't have possibly been involved in the arson. That's not his wife. His wife was a real knockout. Shut up, Bill. Shut up, Bill. Oh, Luna Bauer, out. Out now. Oh, Wait a minute. You're trying to tell me that another woman came in here claiming to be my wife? Yes, she's beautiful. Out, out, out. The body, it's out. Now. Out. Now. Out. Body, it's out. Please. Please. It's beautiful. Hi. Uh, Mr. Sterling, uh, rest assured, if KJME has made a grave error, we will rectify it. Damn right you will, to the tune of ten million dollars. You'll be hearing from our attorney. Uh, Have a nice day. Look, VV, look on the bright side of this, okay? I just have this feeling this is going to send the ratings right through the roof. Right? Reed, Vince, let me look into it. Let's find out exactly what happened. What happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Now, I mean, don't fly off the handle. Everybody's credibility is at stake here. Yes, credibility. Those were my exact words to Bill before he got us into this mess. Right. Uh, not what? to mention a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Read, read. Please, try to extricate us from this uh, quagmire. And Jenny, you get on with Reed. Bauer. Yeah. You're fired. Luna, oh, a cup of job you're you... fired. Ben, Ben, Ben. Just settle down, Please. huh? VV, VV, look at oh. these two tear-stained faces. I mean, these guys are sorry. They know they did something wrong, don't you guys? Oh, yeah, we're, we're sorry. sorry. Chief, he's, he's, he's a real dimwit. VV, haven't they been punished enough? I mean, the VV I know has a heart as big as Raymond Burr. They're your children. Give them another chance. Give them their jobs back. Huh? Reed? Vince, they made a mistake, a big mistake, and I'm sure they'd never do it again. So maybe they deserve another chance. Boys, mm -hmm. your severance pay is in the mail. Oh, oh, no, that's Vince. it. That's it. I've had it. Oh, Listen, guys, oh. I'll do what I can, but don't expect any miracles, oh, okay? Yeah. Now get out of Thanks, here John. before Vanneman comes back. Thanks for all your help. Thank right. you. Right. 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 Really, I tell you, this is, I need some money to tide me over. Who told you to buy a car? Well, uh -huh. Oh. Well, I think the whole thing starts with the woman who conned Bauer and Luna. I mean, that's the mystery. Yeah, but it all goes through Sterling. We have to assume that he's innocent. Maybe she was a woman scorned. Maybe, maybe she really loved him and he dumped her. Maybe he's got a relative or a business partner, somebody who would really benefit by torching that business. Oh, boy, this is getting fun. <laughs> Wait a minute. This isn't a game. There are lives at stake here, careers, the future of the station. <laughs> I know. We'll get Luna and Bauer their jobs back. Come on. Fine. And we'll start with you promising to follow strict journalistic guidelines. From now on, we play by the rules. Oh, John, come on. You know that I work much better when I make up my own rules as I go along. Oh, if that's the way you feel, then go ahead and do it. You mean... Alone without you? But we're a team. It may surprise you to know that Solutions was a pretty good show, pre Jerome. You think you can do this without me? Well, you'd be missed, but I think we'd manage. You want to bet? Any day of the week. I'll take that bet. Oh, Jenny. I'll bet you that I can get Luna and Bauer their jobs back before you can. Don't you try and con me, Jerome. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll take a handicap for myself. I'll take Luna. <laughs> You'll take Luna? <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, 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 she called you a handicap? They didn't call you at all. They're waiting for it to get serious. <laughs> <laughs> Are you to quit arguing and get on with the story? All right, anyway, anyway, Jenny took me to the travel agency to check out Sterling's alibi, right? Now, you know what Jenny's like, right? You can't do anything straight. Nothing straight. There's always got to be the con. Mountain Majesty Tours is giving you two weeks expenses paid in South America. I what? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's terrific. You know, I don't even remember entering. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's take Thank you outside you. for some pictures. Oh, let me fix that tie. Let me fix it. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Go. That's a good look. That's we'll it. Come, come, come on. Right right that's good. No, 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 no. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Hello, I'm Phyllis Thaxter from the Romeo Piccolo Travel Agency. What Jenny was able to find out was that Sterling had bought a plane ticket to L.A. from San Jose. But there was no way to check if he used it. Of course, we found out later that he took the train instead so he could murder Chambers. Yeah, that's right. You see, he killed Chambers and then went to the airport in time to meet his wife. This way, no one could tie him to the murder on the train. Except now, it was an alibi for arson. Meanwhile, Reed was investigating the arson. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see, he and Natalie went to Sterling's burnt-out warehouse. Remember, we're arson investigators, Detectives Riley and Winston. Uh, yeah, I've got that much, John. It's just that well, we're lying to this man. Well, don't think of it as lying. Just think of the story. Think of the jobs we're trying to protect. I know. Bill and Bert. Exactly. I, I don't understand how you know how to do this. Any investigative reporter worth the salt knows how to get information from people. And you really think that Sterling's partner may have committed the arson? That's what we're here to find out. What do you want me to do again? Just follow my lead and remember, these things require a little tact and a lot of finesse. <laughs> well, finesse is my middle name, John. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of finesse. Oh. sweetie how long have i been with the department well mr dietrichson we're here to ask you the questions remember <laughs> yes mr dietrichson sure no problem you know this whole job parody thing's gotten out of whack you gotta work with this chuckle bunny chuckle bunny now listen oh, well, hold on have... hold what? on a second here sarge let me handle this okay that woman happens to be a crack arson investigator. She has solved crimes with hardly a shred of evidence. So if I were you, I would think about cooperating. No problem. Now, you're Thomas Sterling's business partner, right? Was. What? Half a nothing is nothing. Well, I'm sure that the insurance money will leave you plenty to live on, Mr. Dietrichson. Hey, lady. Insurance companies don't pay off on arson. Mr. Dietrichson, I think it's time I talked with my oh, attorney. Bill, come here. Work with me on this, will you? She's a little high strung. Save us both a lot of trouble. Let me relight that cigar for you. Help me out. What do you want to know? You think that your business partner started this fire? Oh, yes. Why? Well, for one thing, he upped the fire insurance two weeks ago. Sterling strikes me as a pretty bright guy. Why would he do something so obvious? Surely he'd know that'd be the first thing we'd check. Well, he had this babe on the side, you know? A nooner? I think she was costing him a bundle. Probably thought he'd take the money and skip town with her. That's a pretty serious accusation, Mr. Dietrichson. Do you know who this woman is? No. But I got curious and followed him one day at lunchtime. Went over to an adult motel on Colfax. Hell, I only saw her from a distance. But I probably would have burned down a whole block for that. I mean, she was a real killer. So Reed found out that Sterling had a girlfriend. And at that moment, she was collecting on a little insurance policy. Mrs. Chambers. On behalf of the Coast All Risk Life Insurance, let me express our sadness at your husband's passing. We hope that this check can in some way compensate for your tragic loss. You are aware, of course, that because your husband was killed on a train, the double indemnity clause in his policy provides you with twice the normal benefit. Two million dollars. Who rides the train anymore, huh? It's almost ironic, his being murdered on a train. I mean, 
A train is, is supposed to be the safest way to travel. How'd I do? Sweetheart, you were perfect. Really? Yeah. You mean that? Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I found out this morning that Sterling did buy a ticket from San Jose to Los Angeles the night of the fire. Terrific. That means he was 35,000 feet above sea level when the fire started. You got it. Reed, Reed, where the hell have you been? I just got off the horn with Mrs. Sterling. She filed a lawsuit. Come on, I need a skinny on this story, and I mean pronto. Maybe we should talk in private. No, 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 forget it, forget it. The whole station knows about this. Do we or do we not think that Sterling started that fire? Yeah, give us the skinny, John. Well, it's just too pat for me, Vince. The fingerprints on the camera. The woman coming in here claiming to be Sterling's wife. I don't know. We just found out that the insurance in the building was increased just before the fire. Yeah, you know, I think John's right. Sterling is far too smart to increase the insurance on his business right before he sets it on fire. Funny, that's what I thought. I don't like what I'm hearing, people. Well, you're not going to like this, Vince, because someone tried to kill John and I this morning. They did? Yes. Did you get a look at him? No, but whoever did it doesn't want us to find out the truth. And the truth is... Though I hate to say it, Sterling is innocent. Well, after this debacle, I might be lucky and get a job managing a 500-watt country radio station. You could always teach, BB. Vince, there's still a way that we could come out clean on this. What do you mean? We prove Sterling is innocent, put it out on the air, chances are his wife will drop the lawsuit. Well, what are we sitting here for? Come on, let's hop to it. I want to see some fur fly. Yes, where do we start? Well, with Sterling's arraignment tomorrow. So we went to Sterling's arraignment, and he pleaded guilty. Guilty? Why would he say he was guilty? He was framed for that arson. Yeah, but who framed him? See, Sterling must have figured out it was his girlfriend after he talked to us at the station. Well, why'd his girlfriend frame him? Oh, get him out of the way. And get all the insurance money for herself. You see, Mrs. Chambers must have been figuring this thing out for years. All she needed was a murderer. See, so she finds some sap, namely Sterling, who will fall in love with her, and she convinces him that the only way they can be together and rich was if her husband was out of the picture. Sterling fell for it. I still don't understand why he pleaded guilty to arson. Well, think about it. Veronica is the only person that can link him to the murder, and he now knows that she set him up. So he didn't want to take any chances. That's right. I'd rather take the two years for arson than risk being linked to the murder and getting the gas chamber. Dan, it would have worked, too. If we, we hadn't been, been on, on the story. story. Please, fellas, fellas, look, I'm off the hook. Bert's off the hook. Let's not worry about small details. Yeah, let's get on with the rest of our lives. Wait a minute. If John thinks that something's fishy, we should look into it. Hey, 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 Sterling admitted he was guilty. We get our jobs back. Let's party. Oh, come Calm on. down, what? Bert. Look, we all want you and Bauer back at Solutions, but John's right. Something's fishy. I mean, if the guy's innocent and he pleaded guilty, then there's a reason for it. Are you guys going to quit just because you might get your jobs back? Yes! yes. <laughs> you guys are beautiful. If we let this one go and we're wrong again, we're all in big, big trouble. All right, then, and I'm coming with you. I don't think that's a good idea, Bill. John, it's my neck that's on the line. I want to help clear myself. Of course, both Reed and Jenny wanted me. They had quite an argument over it. I'll, I'll flip it for them. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, go. Heads, he goes with me. Tails with you. Yep. Ha-ha! <laughs> Have fun! Hey, Luna, come on! Lucky guy. Bill, sit in the back. All right. Harry's hideaway. Now, according to Dietrichson, Sterling's partner, this is where Sterling and his girlfriend used to come. 
Hopefully Sterling and his girlfriend used the same alias each time they were here. So what good does that do us? Bill, if you're going to sit back there and grumble, you can just get out of the car. How is that going to help us find his girlfriend? The motel register always has the name of the guest and the license plate number of their car. Oh, so all we have to do is match the license number with the name of the register, and we know what alias he used. Right. Chances are Sterling's girlfriend drove here on at least one of those days. Which means that her license number should be listed in the register. Right. Pretty incredible, huh? I don't know, they're sitting in front of this motel, Harry's Hideaway. <laughs> the motel register? How am I supposed to get that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call the motel manager? <laughs> oh, no, that's great, that's great, I can do it. No, don't worry about it, I'll call you back later. Right, bye. Jenny wanted me to call the motel manager and trick him into leaving his office unattended so I could photograph the register. What I didn't know was the black car parked near me was Sterling's. Hideaway. Overflowing. It'll turn it off. What do you mean it won't turn it off? All over the beautiful shared carpeting? What room? I'll be right there. I slip past you and read with no problem. Big deal. The biggest deal was that I managed to slip by Sterling undetected. Piece of cake. Now we've just got to get the motel clerk out of the office long enough for me to get in there and take a look at that register. And how do you propose we do that? Frank, call. Hey, that's confidential. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just uh, signing in for you. There you go. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Fishman. At 38 bucks for the super deluxe suite, along with the bathroom. Uh -huh. Couple of hours, okay? I think, uh, yes, that's, that's fine. Oh, right, dear. sweetheart? No, dear, I think that we should spend the night. Anything you say, Mr. and Mrs. Solution! Natalie Thayer and Bill Bauer no. and my no. joy! No. Hey, I love it that you two's <laughs> fool around your off out. <laughs> Natalie? Oh, yeah. Bauer, what's going on here? Yeah. What? Not me. Uh, you, you recognized him. You going to tell the whole world I was sleeping with Bill Bauer. What is so bad about that? <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Get in the car. Let me take care of this. Well, Not another word out of you guys. Meanwhile, Mrs. Chambers was putting together some traveling money. Please thank the bank manager for arranging this for me in such short notice. Thank you, Mrs. Chambers. All right. Good news. They dropped the lawsuit. Bad news, Vince. It's not over. What do you mean? Someone just took a shot at me. John, can't you see when it's time to quit? Sterling admits he's guilty. We're off the hook. Listen, if he's guilty and admits it, then who took a shot at me and why? My responsibility is to the station, Reed. You did a good job. Story's over. Now get back to that insurance thing. Vince, I'm not quitting this story. Reed, you are treading on shaky ground. Now get your feet back on terra firma. You can fire me if you want, but I'm not going to quit the story. Ah! 
Hear anything interesting? So you got sprayed with a couple of bullets, huh? Any casualties? Yeah, a plate glass window and a mirrored ceiling. How are you and Luna making out? Mm, not very well. We hit a dead end. Hey, Jenny, you got the pictures out of the soup? Of your nephew? The cute little tyke? And and how did the ones of the zoo turn out? Oh, this was, oh yeah, he was great. He was cute little thing trying to feed the giraffe. Oh, oh I, I love children. children. Let me see. Let me see. No, you don't want to see. Oh. It's boring. Boring, boring. Still don't understand what a motel register can tell us. Okay, well, I know how Reed's mind works, and he knows that Sterling and his girlfriend spent the night at that motel, and I think he thinks right. Sterling's girlfriend's license plate number's here. Got any coffee creamers in here? Uh, I'm fresh out. Bert, those pictures of your nephew? Yeah. yeah, yeah we don't the... keep the creamer in here. It's out there in the fridge, in the bulletin. Yeah, and watch out for your nose. It really, oh. really reeks in there. It's a okay, cheese. Sorry, to, sorry to bother you. No problem. Excuse me. Okay. What was that all about? He knows we're up to something. Yeah, yeah. Here, give me that piece of paper that you had that license number right, right now. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, good. Okay. Let's see. What's the number? Uh, <clears throat> Bingo! What? I win. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Norton. Norton? No, I got a Norton. Once, twice, I get a lot of Nortons. <laughs> I just love this spy stuff, John. How did you ever think of it? I read a lot. Well, let me see that. Let me see that. Look, there's a difference in the license number for Mr. and Mrs. Norton. PCE462. That's got to be the girlfriend's car. <laughs> I think we better get to the DMV. Hook, line, and sinker, guy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Shh. What? Shh. <gasps> We're going to have to find a way to get to the DMV. Walk in? Well, we couldn't go dressed as ourselves. Um, we'll have to think of something. Oh, yeah, I get it. I get it. Computers were down at the station, so when I suggested we break into the DMV's computer, Reed had to come up with an alternative. Natalie? Yes? Does Jenny still have a computer in her apartment? Yes. Well, at least I think so, yes. Good. Then we're going to beat her to the DMV by using her own computer. Is there still a computer store around the corner? Yeah. What do we do now? We're going to use one of their computers to hook into the DMV computer before Reed does. <gasps> so good. License number. Thank you. Bingo. Veronica Chambers. Veronica Chambers. We'll see what the, her story is all about. Damn. Darling, I'm one step ahead of you. Love, Jenny. Chambers. Chambers. Veronica Chambers. Is there a newspaper here? Can, hand me that newspaper, would you, honey? Let me see it. Brian Chambers, the man murdered on the 1105 train from San Jose, will be buried today at Overlook Park Cemetery. The announcement is made by his wife, Veronica Chambers. Sterling's girlfriend. With all that game playing, we still ended up at the funeral at the same time. 
The one time Veronica Chambers had made herself really visible in public, and the first time I was able to put two and two together. What do you mean? I'm the one who recognized her and from behind. Bert, look at the widow. That's her. Oh. Mrs. Sterling. No, not the real Mrs. Sterling, but the, the woman we thought was the real Mrs. Sterling. Wait a second. This woman here, Sterling's girlfriend, came into the office claiming to be Sterling's wife when she really is the wife of the guy they're throwing the party for, Brian Chambers. Did you know who he is? The guy who was killed on the train. Talking about murder now. Quite a coincidence, isn't it? Veronica Chambers' husband is murdered on a train from San Jose to Los Angeles. The same night that a lover's building burns. And while Sterling's on the train murdering her husband... Veronica is out setting fire to Sterling's business and leaving enough clues to make it look like he did it. He had some choice. He could keep his mouth shut and take the arson rap. Or go to prison for murder. What would you do? I'd follow her. Her period of mourning's over. I guess she's planning on a little trip. Police won't be able to get here in time. Get in the car. had planned to lay low until Sterling was safe behind bars. But Sterling had other ideas. briefcase. We could still go to Rio, just like we planned. What? Nothing's changed. Everything's changed. You burnt my building down and pinned it on me. You're just looking for a sucker, and I happen to be handy. No, that's not true, Thomas. I love you. You love me enough to get me to kill your husband for you. Nobody has to know about the murder. The people at Solutions already know. Excuse me, when is the next train? Uh, where to? Anywhere. Uh, Desert Wind leaves in five minutes, track 16. Thank you, thank you. Come on. The Silver Dollar Special, train 23, service to The Los only Angeles. link between the murder and me is you. Oh, Thomas, don't you remember what we had together? We could have it again. Just you and me alone. I've been trying to get you alone for days, Veronica. But your husband's grieving relatives have been hanging around you like flies. We're going to take a little train ride, Veronica. Only you're going to get off early, just like your husband did. Sterling! Oh, no. 
do you think he did it? For her? For the money? Yeah, but he didn't get her. Mm -hmm. And he didn't get the money. Nope. Women. Huh? Go figure him, huh? You know, uh, from what you guys just told me, it sounds to me like neither one of you solved this murder. Oh, no, wait, 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 those other two, Reed and Jenny, they solved it. Oh, oh come on. Hey, well, spend a quarter. Buy a the, newspaper. The press saw about? it a little differently, pal. Yeah. Yeah. Could you elaborate for us? Is it true, sir? Please, please, please. Tell us. We were lucky. Lucky to get all the clues, put them together, and get the story. It was a tough one. But the tough gets going. When the going gets rough. When the going gets rough. Isn't it true, Bill, that you were fired by KJME in the middle of this investigation? Oh, uh, please, please, people, that is absolutely baseless. Uh, the management here at KJME has the utmost confidence in our staff, particularly this fellow right here, our own Bill Bauer. And I'm smelling an Emmy here, folks. Oh, well. <laughs> please, 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 I want you all to know that I couldn't have done it without my friend and colleague, Bert Luna, and oh, and of course, my lovely co-host, Natalie Thayer. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Tonight on Knott's Landing, the moment of truth in a deadly confrontation. But first, Rick and A.J. uncover a clever plot when a Hollywood heartthrob is kidnapped from a privatized convention on Simon & Simon next. This weekend on CBS Sports Saturday, Olympic medalist Willie DeWitt battles Smoke and Burt Cooper in boxing action. Plus, the European Figure Skating Championships Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> 